Hello and welcome to Reinfused. We are <laughs> taking part in the weekend streamathon for the uh, Centre for Computing History in Cambridge. Uh, a very worthy cause indeed. Uh, they have lost quite a few of the revenue streams. Obviously with the current pandemic, people are not going around anymore and they are not able to take part in events and stuff which is what some of the main revenue drivers of the center it's not uh, given much funding outside of uh, it's what it can generate itself so uh, for this weekend several streamers will be working to try to raise some of that money and this is us so what are we doing we are <laughs> <laughs> we are taking a look at the Epoch Super Cassette Vision. And if you've never used the Epoch Super Cassette Vision before, then, um, or heard of it even, it was a machine back in the uh, third generation of consoles. It was, uh, it's easily described as the, as Nintendo, oh, hello, hello everyone. You're here, I will stop talking and I will restart from the beginning. <laughs> Hello all, hello all. I hope you uh, you enjoyed the Computer Museum stream. I was certainly enjoying it up to the point when I had to leave and fix major sound problems with the console. Fabulous. <laughs> Thanks very much for following. Right. Yes, right, okay, from the beginning then. <laughs> Thanks for hosting. This, um, uh, so we're part of the uh, the weekend streamathon for the Centre for Computing History, uh, a very incredibly worthy bot. No, oh, I read bot and I put that into my, my text. <laughs> I'm using CloudBot Luna, so it's a uh, Streamlabs own thing. Uh, right, so no, we are looking at the, uh, the, the Epoch Super Cassette Vision, which was uh, primarily a, a Japanese console. Although it was did have some European release, but under the brand of Yeno, so that the Yeno Super Cassette Vision. Uh, at the risk of making you all motion sick, let's take a little look at the machine using the uh, the second camera. Oh, was the stream? Nope, that's fine. Just one person. That's good. Thanks for hosting all. So yeah, so this is the machine. You see, it's got a lovely little uh, number pad on the side that's used for selecting certain things like. Uh, levels on games and stuff but also the basic cartridge also used it uh, uh the machine is a, it's a lovely little designed machine look at that look at those that svelte design there like a sports car uh and we have this little uh this little lid here where you could store your controls away if you could ever make them fit ever again after taking them out there is a second controller they are fixed as well so if we go in here you can see like the uh, famicom they are fixed in position indeed very possibly uh, a driving factor for nintendo fixing the controls originally uh it's tape it is cartridge based but you could actually get a tape player for it yep uh and yeah and uh the machine the game playing at the moment is pop and chips and it is indeed a larger uh, game because it has batteries for, for memory backup. The other game like that is yeah, let's do this camera instead, that's easier is Dragon Slayer, which is I think probably the rarest game on the machine uh, you won't be seeing this today because I have not yet managed to repair it so that was a lot of warbling <laughs> we got there <laughs> the uh, the machine uh, I think this is this is very probably my my favourite console. My of all my and I've got a room full again at the risk of making you feel motion sick. Uh, I've got a room room full room full of uh, of game. That doesn't help because it's too dark. A room full of of consoles. Several of them rare uh, because I I am I am an enthusiast in that way. Uh, but I think this is my favourite and it's. Um, it's largely unknown outside of us lot who just um, who who just try to find this this stuff that we don't know anything about. We uh, it's really largely unknown, it, and it genuinely was. Thank you, Nostalgia Nerd. Uh, it really was effectively the the Famicom of its time. 
Unfortunately, its time was exactly a year when the actual Famicom became the Famicom of its time and, and basically obliterated it. Epoch kind of went on for a bit longer after that. Um, and they're still alive. The company is still alive and they still make all sorts of things. But um, they stopped effectively doing the, uh, the mainline console business and, and moved on. They uh, also had uh, effectively the first Japanese cartridge console which was the cassette vision. Although they did, they also rebadged the, um, they rebadged the cassette vision as well. Uh, they rebadged so the Atari 2600 uh, in Japan, but they, um, their, the cassette vision was their own machine, although I've got those. Um, there's not that many games for them. It didn't do, it did quite well. It was for a while the most successful console going, but again, it wasn't a huge market at that point. Uh, but the uh, it's kind of it's weird because the cartridges actually have the all of the game uh, uh, processing on them, and the the actual console itself is really just a pass through system for controllers, much like some of the earlier handheld systems like the uh, the Microvision. Anyway, enough of that nonsense. Here's the uh, here's the rather lovely controller. Uh, it's not lovely. It's it's quite it's not the greatest controller ever. It's all right. Uh, it's two button as well, so you know that's pretty good for its. Uh, it's time. Uh, now the, because the, the, the thing about the Epoch, and it's something I've said a few times, if you look at some of the uh, Nintendo um, early engineer stories, and you remember, it wasn't, obviously it wasn't Sega they were ever really worried about. Really, weirdly, Sega was kind of the <laughs> the, the thing they, they least worried about. In like the in the 16-bit in the era, they were concerned about NEC and the, and the PC Engine. Uh, and in this era, it was, it was Epoch that they were concerned about. Uh, they were the ones... Uh, yeah, they were the ones that were really there. Uh, all of my, I mean, I was lucky enough, very lucky to have imported, started importing stuff a, a long time ago, before before idiots like me made videos about stuff and wrote books and did streaming and made stuff sought after. And so people went out and, and dro um, raised all the prices. Uh, so a lot of my stuff I got much better prices than, than they're available nowadays um the cassette vision for instance i mean my one this one right here was eight pounds i got it for eight quid with a couple of games they're going for ridiculous prices now and most of them are missing this the little frosty glass bit of the front which is a shame anyway <laughs> let's go up to the game uh if I, i'm going to change games and i'm going to do uh, a kind of an odd an odd game because and the reason i'm going to do it is because it's nigh on impossible for me to play so uh, this is a game down here called um, yeah uh, get ready for this one Milky Princess. <laughs> it's um it's mostly known because uh, it was a pack-in title for there was basically a girl version of the Super Cassette Vision which was in pink. It's incredibly sought after by everyone. I want one certainly, um, but it's 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 impossibly rare to get. Uh, and this was a game that was was kind of packed in right. This is we're going to get a bit of blue screens. Uh, yeah, and this is the reason why we're doing it, Diddy, <laughs> because it's a, it's a, basically it's a, uh, it's a question and arcade combination, and uh, I've never been able to get past the question part of it because I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> right, so we start a game basically the key, the keypad, and this gives you options again already. Don't know what those options are, so we'll just go for number one because why not? And then we get this lovely animated screen. Look at the look at the quality of those graphics. Those are good graphics. They really are. And you'll see even more. Uh, I'm starting to think that the sound is again stopped working. Which is annoying. It's also if you can hear a fan. Hi Riley sis, how are you doing? If you can hear a fan, I apologize if it's loud. But it is sweltering here. Britain is uh, is going for a bit of a, a minor heat wave, which you know, always good when you're supposed to stay in all the time. Right, yeah, this is unskippable. <laughs> Whatever this is saying, and it's probably a beautiful story. They always are. Don't know. Can't read Japanese. It's my greatest failing. Well, not my greatest failing. But certainly up there. Right, so here's a question. <laughs> if anyone if anyone speaks Japanese, 
<laughs> or read Japanese, then uh, then it'd be helpful. I'm just going to randomly choose. I'm going to randomly choose one, which isn't random, really. It's it's number one. I don't know what happens if we get it right. I'm, I, is it flashing red? Does that mean we've got it wrong? I don't know. Ah, excellent. Thank you very much. <laughs> I got it right. <laughs> the questions get harder than that, I assume. <laughs> yeah, I've tried um I've tried using the live translate and whatever it is my TV that I use does not agree with with Google. It just it does not allow anything to uh, to translate. Because uh, I tried it when I originally had an FM Towns Marty, right back when I first had the FM Towns, and I was trying to use discs, and I was getting tons of errors. Couldn't work out what it says. Your birthday. Oh, this one is birthday? Okay, this is going to be... Um, <laughs> year, month, day. Year, month, day. Okay, so, all right, you can all get to see my year, right. You don't have to put your real one in, bud. It's a good point, I don't. Why am I doing that? <laughs> this isn't working. What am I doing? Right, it's fine. You can know the year of my birth. That's, that's fine. But I'm going to not do the right... Although I think quite a lot of people do know. It doesn't matter, just don't put it in. Yeah. No I think mean, a lot, lot of people do know my birthday, but it's fine. It's fine. We're playing along together. All <laughs> oh, right, blood type. I know this one, blood type. A load of Japanese games have blood type. I don't fully understand why, but there you go. This feels like I'm just allowing Twitch to to, exactly. to harvest my personal information. Exactly. Okay. I have got past this part before, but I was just basically typing stuff, and I guess I just did something serious. Uh, I, I had the uh, the benefit of serious health problems uh, when I was younger, and so I very much know my blood type. Right, I think what we're going to do, even though we do have to kill two hours, <laughs> I think killing two hours by playing Milky Princess is not the content that everyone has come for. Thank you, Felice Maggie. Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> I think we're going to move on to the next game. We've got this whole stack of games here to play through. Uh, I know quite a lot. I got quite a lot of them are boxed, but not all of them. They have now got quite expensive, so uh, filling in the gaps in my uh, my collection is getting a lot harder. Right. Well, it's a baseball game. Of course, it's a baseball game. It's a it's a Japanese console. There's always a baseball game. Uh, right, so this is where we use the keypad properly, so we can choose from these list of options. So uh, I think we're very much going for amateur and one player. Start button is just one of the fire buttons. <laughs> An hour and a half of Milky Princess. <laughs> that just, that there's no way that's ever going to sound right. Right. It's baseball. And I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> oh, way too early. Right. Come on. I mean, yeah, it's just baseball. But it's uh, it's quite pretty.
Well, that was... I, I feel that was wrong. That was coming straight at me. <laughs> it's more expensive rounders. That's what it is. I think it's... Uh, it's the graphics are, are really well defined. And you can kind of see... That it's... Um, <laughs> I'm really doing badly. Uh, and you, you can see that it, it really would have done quite well. Re oh, well, that was terrible. That was just awful. <laughs> it really did, would have done quite well uh, in its era. But um, I think Nintendo just... They hit the ground running so well uh, that nothing else really stood a chance. Why is he just throwing it to him? I'm not going to make him run. Throw it at my batter. Oh, I don't really know much about baseball. <laughs> and I'm certainly not very good at baseball games. Oh, that didn't look like it was particularly good. Oh, yeah, I think that was probably an out or something, wasn't it? Right. Come on. Hold on, is this me? Am I bowling now? Bowling? Is it bowling? No. Pitching. It's not called bowling, is it? In uh... Pitching! Pitching! I'm pitching! That's it. Again, if you've only just joined, we are doing this uh, in aid of the Centre for Computing History in Cambridge. Uh, an incredibly worthy cause. They... Look at that. I wonder if I could do that and I just didn't bother. <laughs> they are obviously suffering quite a lot, as a, as a lot of organisations are, from the um, the current pandemic, where they're not, they're losing out on some revenue streams, because uh, a museum really does really does rely on its footfall to get uh, quite a lot of its revenue. And that's especially true with uh, smaller places like the centre. And it is an incredible place. I've been there a few times, and I have. Uh, all right, Andy, I have. Um, I've exhibited there as well with some of my uh, some of my stuff. And uh, yeah, you know, if something happens to them, who on earth, how on earth will I show off all of my stuff to other people? And that would be, make me sad. I mean, if I spent all this money on things, I want to show it off. I know it's an incredible place, and it's um, it's so different to so many of the other museums which you know everything's behind velvet ropes and uh, and you don't really get to uh, to really play with stuff but so much of the so many of the exhibits at the uh, at the center are uh, able to be used like the computers some of the computers and stuff and the uh, there's all sorts of uh, educational programs and things. It's an incredible place and it really does deserve your help. So if you can donate or even share. Sharing is, is helpful as well. Just getting the word out there. Um, because it would, be, it would be a tragedy for, uh, for us to lose this uh, amazing educational and, uh, and his, te technologically historical resource as well. Which is, uh, is, is as important in my mind certainly as the... Uh, Educational part of it. Right, that's enough baseball. Uh, just flash, flash, that's enough flash rounders. Oh, <laughs> well, we're going, we're, we're going from rounders to golf. So, uh, it's not a great start. The blue screen, as you see, uh, is uh, what happens when you don't get good contact on the cartridges. There's also, if it doesn't get any contact at all like if it can't detect there's anything there you get like a nice little screen with balloons for ages uh, when I first got this I didn't know uh, what that was what that little <laughs> what the little balloon things were and uh, I assumed that it was a game about balloons even though it was called I think it was literally soccer which we'll get to at some point and I'm thinking well what's balloons in this for and it was yeah literally because the uh, Oi, come on. It's gone. Right, I don't know why this isn't starting. Well. 
<laughs> this is going well. Uh, yeah, you should see the, the link for the donation page will be popping up in the bottom corner. Oh, oh. brilliant. Fantastic. Someone's out of £10. And 14 pence. Excellent. Hooray! Wow. Another donation. Excellent. Thank you very much. Of course it can play Crisis. Everything can play Crisis nowadays. <laughs> Right, whatever reason, golf is not starting. It's golf. There's not much you can say about that. Right. We are going to Boulder Dash. Now, uh, many of you may know Boulder Dash. It's a, it's a renowned game. It's a historic game. Uh, it was, uh, it's been copied by several other games as well. Uh, this is uh, hmm, an, an interesting conversion of the, uh, of the game. I'll say interesting when I first when I first move you'll you'll see the reason why it's interesting rather than good. So here you are. So this is Boulder Dash. The idea is you've got to collect all these diamonds, which are the blue uh, things with yellow lines. Obviously, they're diamonds, uh, and you need to do it by avoiding being brained by these boulders. Uh, as you dig through the yellow stuff, which is dirt, the boulders will fall and they'll fall in different directions and stuff when you dig next to them, stuff like that. So, um, yeah, if I dig down here, you'll see that boulder falls. Now, here's the problem with this this port of it. Yeah, the, the screen just kind of lazily moves along and it, it, it really does start to make your eyes very tired after not very much time at all. Uh, which is a shame because uh, it works well enough. The game is okay. But the, the lazy, yeah, the, the, the lazy scrolling is just painful. So, uh, right. Yeah. So the idea is you just go around and you collect these diamonds and try not to get yourself crushed by boulders. So you see you do that, you'll see those boulders will then fall. You can also be crushed by the diamonds, by the way, if they land on you. So those are big diamonds. Right. Let's, uh... All right, thanks, Chromag. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, <laughs> you have to. We, we can't allow links nowadays because people um, do abuse it sometimes. Now, the flashing means I've got enough diamonds to actually complete this stage. So if I go across here. There should be a gate. There we go, the gate's flashing, so we can go in. And that's level complete. And that's it. That's Boulder Dash. <laughs> it will yeah, it's been it's been converted to so many uh, other platforms and obviously uh, there's Repton on the BBC Micro and Electron World which are um are very similar games. But uh this is effectively the original. Right, so that was Boulder Dash. Now this is a, an even more classic game, and there were so many games that are based on this or have taken inspiration from this game. Miner 2049er. It's just brilliant. And this is a very, very good port of it as well. Uh, I do like this game quite a lot. Uh, it's on several platforms again. Um, I think the uh, the writer of uh, Jet Set Willy put it down as an inspiration and things like that. But yeah, so you're just, uh, there you are, you're Miner Willy right there. And the idea is you have to avoid these creatures whilst walking on these platforms. You see the platforms get more solid as we walk into them. So the idea is we have to make the platforms all solid. And then we complete the level. Now if we pick up an object like this. The creatures for a short time, and it's quite a short time, <laughs> will turn a different colour and we can run over them. Just like Pac-Man. Yeah, yeah, it, it, uh, you're right, you're right, Mame Hayes. It is. Um, there are 
there are so many rare consoles that never left Japan but have um, games which we do kind of recognize as being as being uh, if not European at least Western oops I fell too far <laughs> And we start from scratch. I was because I, I was doing a, a Famicom disk system stream the other day, and one of the things I picked up on a, a little while ago um, was that uh, Jalico, especially, but a few other companies had basically licensed loads of uh, eight-bit software um, or, or eight-bit names and made completely different games out of them um although i think uh, it was kim just did did a, did a much better uh, video than than i could have um on the same subject as well uh thank you moogle mania but uh it's just kind of odd that at that time the the famicom just wasn't going to be coming out well certainly not anytime soon in the west but they licensed these names oh, I fell again. <laughs> they'd license these names which would have had no meaning really to people in japan uh, and then made completely different games as well like monty on the run is, is an especially good example of it the game on the famicom this, this system is very good but it's not monty on the run it's not there's not even a mole in the main character uh it's a but it's a very good platformer still uh i would say better and there will be people that would not be happy with me saying this Certainly better than the actual Monty on the Mole was. Monty on the Run, sorry. Uh, not a huge fan of Monty Mole games. I, I do apologise. I've always felt they're a bit clunky in their movements. And I've read, I think, the same about Dizzy games. Whilst I am indeed a, uh, a Spectrum boy, was never a huge fan of Dizzy. Ah, oh, I fell again. <laughs> it is kind of surprising, actually, Meme Hage, yeah. We, I found, um, while we were doing the uh, the Famicom Disk System games, we found uh, a version of Little Computer People, which was just really odd. Unfortunately, it seemed to crash quite often, so we couldn't get very far in it. But uh, that was a really weird blast from the past to see pop up. But again, uh, another kind of idea... Uh, oh god <laughs> uh the super concept vision i think it was near 40 is quite quite a few really considering how long it was out for <laughs> all i'm saying is there are better games on the sinclair spectrum than, than the dizzy games that said i did come very close to bidding for one of the uh, the recreated uh, Dizzy Jaguar games because it was on eBay. That was I consider that might make a nice video. And then I remembered I didn't like Dizzy, and it, there was wasn't much chance it was going to be any good on the Jaguar. <laughs> oh no, the yeah uh, the, the the darlings are great. I mean they're they're amazing people. It's a darlings, isn't it? Um, uh, they did lots of really good games, but I, I do not think the uh, the Dizzy games are among them. I know they've got their fans. That, that's fine. Right, now this one has got a slightly different mechanic. And if we walk over any of these white things, we slide down. It's kind of like snakes and ladders. Uh, and it's frustrating because you generally forget every single layer you're on. And you end up getting all the way up and then suddenly sliding down again. But it is... A fantastic game. I can't keep playing this game. I it is it is very 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 see like that. <laughs> you get all the way up and then you just slide the way down. It is really tempting just to play this game for the rest of the stream. I will say because this is a brilliant game. Minor twenty forty nine er. If you could get it on your machines and it was available on a lot of eight bit machines, uh, and also I think the Amiga and the ST had versions of it. I think Goldfish, you'll be able to. Yes, you, yeah, right. In fact, you've said that as I said it. Um, then uh, it's it's genuinely <laughs> every time I forget. It's it's genuinely worth playing. It's 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 just such a fun game. It does help. Uh, the Super Cassette Vision has the advantage that it has two buttons. Uh, obviously, which oh dizzy. 
I'm, I'm sure this must have been on 16-bit platforms. It's such a classic game. Yeah, it's definitely on the 800XL. That's for sure. Right, I'm, I'm stopping playing because I will just play that for the rest of the stream. Right, this is an interesting game. I, I really like this game. I am terrible at it. But it's a, it's a really fun game. Right, Lupin Free. So I think this is based on anime, naturally. Uh, and the idea is that we are, I think, escaping from the police or something. Because we seem to be arrested. Uh, and you can uh, you can do all sorts of things. But I think the graphics are really nice. They're quite simple, but I think they're very, very nice. And I just, yeah, they're just really nice graphics. Thanks. I am not big on, on, on <laughs> anime either. So uh, I've watched a few bits, but I, I do not know a huge amount about it. Thank you for hosting uh, Dusk versus Tweak. There we go. Look, really, really nice graphics. And we can punch the bats, which is good. And we can duck and jump. Uh, possibly, I guess. But it's... um. Ah, right. Fair enough. These things, which I don't think are turds. <laughs> I don't think these things running on the bottom are turds. Yeah, it's really, it's just really nice um, graphics. They're very simple graphics and they're well animated. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of this game, but I am not good at it. Thanks for following me, Blue uh, Pinecone. Right. Ah, uh, there we go, got it. <laughs> Bomb! <laughs> And that's up the top there, the, the guy you can see doing the weird dance. That's the police inspector that tries to catch you. So what we can do, you see this bomb here. We can uh, we can hit the bomb. And it will fall down. But the idea is just you need to time it. Oh, I pressed the wrong button instead of jump. <laughs> oh, thank you, Broken Circus. This is it. It's such a it's such a wonderful game. <laughs> yeah, when I, I started reading that Broken Circus, and I realised, oh, hold on, that's the uh, that's the name of the the, the charitable campaign we're doing. So I I worked it out eventually. It was you. <laughs> there you go. So we can make those bombs drop on the onto the crocodile, which seems cruel. It's only doing you know. Somebody must have flushed it down into the into the sewer system. It's it's not its fault. <laughs> the little the little sad face when he's arrested <laughs> it's just it's just such such a characterful game it's just so nice <laughs> i think that was a subscription to my youtube page rather than anything else Yeah, I just the the animation, the, the the graphics are really clear for what they are. Yeah, it's duck. You can kind of crawl along as well. It's a it's just such a it's a wonderful little game, and it's when you kind of ah I hate this when okay. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was on my YouTube channel because it would be impossible to any other kind of kind of subscription. Um, yeah, I think this is just a it's just a fantastic game. It's. It's just got nice graphics. It plays really well. Uh, you you might think it's playing badly because uh, because of how I'm doing, but that's very much my ability rather than the game. The game is very playable. You can kind of see on the edge of the screen that, that the oh, those are really unfair when the possibly turds are along the same line as the bat, and it's really hard to do anything. <laughs> Yeah, you can see on the side of the screen that the drawing thing that this seems to have a similar drawing issue as the Famicom, where it, it needs to overlap to draw properly. I'm guessing on a CRT, uh, you yeah you can jump and punch, but I keep forgetting. Uh, I'm guessing on a CRT you probably can't see it because of overscan. But we aren't on the CRT. I also keep pushing the wrong button as well, so I keep pushing punch instead of jump. 
and vice versa. I just wonder if you could climb up. <laughs> It'd be interesting. <laughs> right. So, if we do that, we should be able to hit the crocodile. And that slows the crocodile down a little bit. I don't know what these things do. There we go. That was a punch. Uh, there we go. <laughs> that was a bit of a panicky one, that one. <laughs> Thanks for following. <laughs> this is this is what your council tax is stopping from happening. <laughs> Thanks for following, Sid Box. Ah, jump, 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 kill. I panicked a little bit there. There was a bit of panic, and it didn't go well. <laughs> we're at 455. Hey, we've just been told we're up to 455. Excellent work, everyone. Thanks for donating. It's a very worthy cause. The Centre of Computing History is a fantastic educational and technologically historical resource. Um, and it's one of the few places you can go to, uh, well, for someone of my generation, and instantly be taken back to what your school was like. In a good way. In a good way, yeah. <laughs> In a good way. <laughs> My school was very violent, so there's none of that. But there's a lot of BBC Micros, which is the other thing my school had. They also do a very, very good tea. I will say that. The people in charge of the uh, of the tea making are uh, are accustomed to making tea. And you can, uh, you, you can very much tell that. Right. <laughs> This is another one I've got to stop playing. It's a uh, it's a really fun game. Oh yeah, and they they generally have fab lollies, and fabs are are just they they rarely in shops nowadays. Although you can generally buy them for supermarkets, so that as well is also a very good reason for going there. That the technology and the tea, that's the reason to go. Plus there are oh I think I got to the end. Woo! <laughs> oh, he's happy. We're still in the sewers, though. This this isn't. We're not out of the sewers. Uh oh, now there's a cop chasing us. <laughs> yeah, feasts were amazing as well, especially those caramel ones they released after a while. Right, I'm guessing we have to jump over the holes now. There's still bats. There's now also bouncing balls. Why are there bouncing balls? That looked like it hit in a very painful place. Funny anyway. Feet, they got those. Oh, funny feats. Eh? Yes, funny feats were amazing as well. Right. Let's move on to another game. We are running out of games faster than I expected. So if we do run out of games, we can always turn to another machine. That I've got multiple machines, certainly. The bouncing ball did very much bruise my plums. There's no doubt about that. If you're not English, bruise my plums may have confused you. I apologise. That's exactly what it sounds like, though. <laughs> I don't, but that sounds amazing. Right, Kung Fu Road. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like Ya Kung Fu, really, but I think this is better. It also looks really nice. I think this looks better than Ya Kung Fu, for my mind. And bearing in mind, all I can remember about Ya Kung Fu is the Spectrum version, and it was really annoying. I do like the way the guy with the nunchucks just kind of hits you in the face once and then just wanders off like he's forgotten to turn the gas off or something. Ah, <laughs> There's a bunch of moves. You've got like a health bar on the top. So I guess Chen is his name. Or it's a thing in Japanese for health. I don't know. Could be. There's every chance. <laughs> it does it, it does seem like he's forgotten to do something. And he, he smacks you once in the face. He goes, oh, no, wait. Back in a minute, lads. But this is, um, like Ya Kung Fu, it's, it's very just this. <laughs> and it's, it's nice enough. It's, I, I like the graphics. I really do like the graphics. Uh-oh, bombs. Nope, not a bomb. It's fine. Can I hit that? I think I'm supposed to hit that. I'm not really getting time to hit it. Nope. <laughs> nope. 
Oh my god, there's a ball! Ball! <laughs> I've never seen the ball before. I usually get pulled this game a lot earlier. <laughs> but yes, anyway, I've just smacked a bull in the face, which isn't very nice, but, you know, better to do it virtually than anything else. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Ah! Oh, what an astonishing game. <laughs> it also, it doesn't, if you die, you, you, you kind of stay in the same place, which means... Jump! Jump! What platform is this? What? What platform are we playing on? Ah, right, so, uh, Jason Bradbury. Hi, mate. This is the uh, Epoch Super Cassette Vision. So, uh, a, Japanese ga a Japanese machine from the third generation. Uh, called the... Uh, basically, the Famicom of its time. Unfortunately, its time was about a year before the actual Famicom became the Famicom of its time and effectively destroyed it. But uh, it's, it's a, a brilliant, brilliant console. It's one of my favourites. Uh, it's actually probably from my retro collection, probably my favourite. I bought this... And that's kind of the weird thing, because I bought this machine and um, I didn't know what it was at all because it was quite early on in my in my... Uh, retro games and it was about eight quid I think I think it was about eight quid I don't know what the delivery was it was coming from Japan so probably a lot more than eight pounds um, uh, and I didn't think anything of it really it came with a game but I didn't really play it and and then uh, I, the game I had was Elevator Action uh, which we will get to in a minute and uh, I just thought oh I, I may as well try this machine out and see if it works and then I um I just got massively addicted to Elevator Action and from there just started getting more games for it. And yeah, it's, it's such a fascinating machine. I've taken it to the museum uh, a couple of times now for different events uh, and it always gets quite a lot of play, especially, uh, yeah, Elevator Action, which I think is, personally, I think is the best game on the machine. But then it's my favourite game, so I'm kind of... Uh, How are you putting it this I have this currently going from uh, an RGB SCART lead, which it has RGB SCART port in the back. Uh, into an OSSC. Uh, that's then going into a really cheap, no-name uh, HDMI uh, capture device, which I got from uh, Amazon for something like 60 quid. Uh, but it works. <laughs> ah, no, no, sorry. Ah, ball's got me. Ball's got me. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. Right, <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> Uh, I can kind of show you, uh, and again, so uh, on the back, come on, come on, there we go. On the back, you can get, you can still buy these RGB cables, by the way. A couple of online um, companies actually sell them still for the for this machine. Because it was released in France as the Yeno, it basically, it, it's that a lot of stuff is still available. So that's an RGB SCART cable, which is going into my OSSC. And then the OSSC, unfortunately it's all over there, so I can't show you that. The OSSC goes into a very, very cheap HDMI capture dongle, which is USB free. Uh, it was, yeah, like 60 quid on Amazon. Just if you search for HDMI capture on Amazon, you'll find it. And it works. It's, um, the, the sound isn't working at the moment. I don't know why. It was working just before the stream started, but... Uh, it, yeah, and it's... Yeah, and it just it works well enough, basically. Thanks for being around, Dimo. Thanks for that. Have a good one. Right. That's enough of Kung Fu Road. Now we're going to go to Elevator Action. Again, which I think... It's not the last one. There, there are several other games. But I personally think this is the best game. It's a real shame we're not getting sound because the sound on Elevator Action is especially good. The sound on this machine is very, very good. But, yeah. <laughs> the sound is not working. Right, so Elevator Action. There have been several versions of this. You may know um, Elevator Fight. You may know... Uh, sorry, this Elevator Fight. Ignore Elevator Action. You may know Elevator Action. That's a well-known arcade machine. And this is very much based on that. Need a drink. And there have been several games based on this as well. There was even a modern version of Elevator Action. 
So, uh, again, the, the, the uh, Super Cassette version has a keypad, which you use to select things. There's also a version of BASIC for this. I don't own the version of BASIC because I've never seen it sell for less than £200. And I've already done that once with the Bandai RX78 when I bought the BASIC cartridge for £200. Um, not doing it again. <laughs> So, um, yeah, the basic lets you use the keypad to do to do basic programs. I think using some kind of hex styles thing. Uh, very weird. But anyway, we use the keypad to choose our level. Uh, and then the two button joysticks it is a two button joystick as well. So both these buttons are independent. The stick is, uh, I guess, designed for children is the best way of describing that. Uh, although it is fixed, uh, if you actually open the machine up, they, there are headers connected to the board. Which is good because then you can uh, you can actually uh, fix them. So I've had to open these up and clean them out before they would work properly. Right. So if you've never played Elevator Action or some of those games, Elevator Fight works like this. We've got our guy. We can shoot our gun. If we stand next to a hole where there's an elevator shaft, it will load an elevator. Now these guys will try to shoot us, but we need to shoot them. Red bits make us fall through. And we need to basically select collect all these keys before we get to the end. So that we can open up the gate. Uh, the bad guys will also use elevators. But that's fine because we get a chance to shoot them before they go anywhere. Like that. There we go. Yeah. It's a, it's a very, uh, a very, very uh, inspired game. It's been very much inspired by... Uh... Oh, there you go. That was a mistake. I fell down while the guy was looking at me. It's been very, very inspired by elevator action. Um... But it's a brilliant game. It's just got a lot in it. Uh, and you don't start from the beginning as well. When you die, you actually do get to continue. Which uh, I do like in games. There's too many games of this era that don't do that. <laughs> uh, bad guys do respawn, so you don't, uh, unfortunately. Right, so here's the problem. We have to get to that key. And we've done this wrong. We need to go through the other one. <laughs> yeah, I guess uh, the, the aliens are, are, are quite, well, baboon and elephant-like, certainly. Right. Die alien scum, is what we say there, of course. Uh, so here's the problem. That's it, we need this guy to come up, because otherwise he's just going to shoot us. Ah, oh, same with this one. So here's the problem. You, you can't, if you try to go down an elevator... Uh, so to speak, then uh, and there's somebody there, you will just die because they'll just shoot you. Ah, oh. <laughs> unfortunately, the chance. Oh, there we go. Here's, here's our gap. Let's do it. There we go. <laughs> now we still need to go down here because unfortunately, the red holes mean we'll fall through, so we won't be able to get the keys. And we have to get all the keys. Right. Death from above. There we go. <laughs> right, so you see where that little claw thing is? That's another bad guy. Well, this uh, this gap here would have had an electrical fence around it, but now we've got all the keys. That's right, you can't fall down. I don't remember how you avoid that. I think you can just about jump over that hole. Uh, but it's fine. It will take us back there, so it's not a problem. There you go. You saw that, that electrical fence there for a second. There we go. It's reactivated, but that's fine. We're already here, not a problem. Now, if we walk underneath these grabbers when they're grabbing, oh, and shoot that, then uh, they'll kill us, so we avoid that. But yeah, there's just so much in this game. We need to... Oh. Yeah, some of it is a bit unfair, <laughs> where you don't have the option but to die. But uh, there, so that's, uh, that's Elevator Fight, and it is uh, a, a brilliant version of Elevator Action, really. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's move on. We're on to the box games now, so the ones that are in their fancy little boxes. So this was the standard box they use. It's quite nice. It's a very neat little design. They come with these little instruction books, which are mostly just how to turn the machine on and what have you. Uh, there you go. And it's like, these are all similar. So the bigger cartridges, the ones that got battery backup, like um, Dragon Slayer and... 
Let me just dig because I've just realized we haven't actually played pop and chips yet. Uh, and pop and chips, which has got the battery back up. Uh, basically, the, the boxes just don't have these bit of the sides and then they just, they just fit in. So it's the same box just without the, the extra cardboard bits. Very clever. I really like it. It's like a standardized box system. And uh, yeah, obviously this was very, very early in the console lifespan. In fact, you could arguably say that this was the, the first of the kind of the modern era of consoles uh, after the 2600, 2600. Let me say that properly, never mind. Wheelie Racer. It is, as you can probably imagine, a car game. Uh, it's got an interesting... Uh, motif about it and that's it uh you kind of well wheeling wheeling makes you faster obviously yep go on challenge america we're challenging america okay i am the red car and as you can see we can wheelie there we go which gets our speed up <laughs> and now it's just basically road fighter this is <laughs> it's just any of those card game car games lead storm road Ra uh, road fighter all those uh, but it's nice. The graphics are really, really nice, really detailed. The tracks maybe not so much, but the cars themselves are. And yeah, you can pit for fuel and stuff because as you can see, we are running low on fuel. Oh, and uh, I just went straight through some cones and into the back of something. Right, come on. Let's go. <laughs> that was it. If you got the front wheel off for two seconds, you did a wheelie. That was the... That was a wheelie, right? <laughs> it's good. It's a shame uh, there was never like a spy hunter for this machine because I think it would have handled it really well. So yeah, to go faster, we just wheelie. Oh, I blew up. <laughs> Come on. There we go. We're going. But yeah, it's just a... Uh, it's not an amazing game. <laughs> there's cows on the side of the road, though. You know, so there's scenery. That's definitely scenery. And I keep missing the fuel stops, which which is going to end poorly. Oh, there you go. It's night time. It's a very sudden night time. And there's no headlamps, obviously. <laughs> there's a bit of a pause. And I keep wondering why it's not starting. And then I realise it's because there's a pause before it starts. Right, these trucks are buggers because they, they keep trying to knock you off. You see? How is that fair? Come on, speed up. No. Nope. <laughs> but these are these are really nice games. Um Yeah, the the uh Epoch Supervision uh Super Cassette Vision has become very expensive over the years. As much of the obviously the uh the oh, 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 pit stop. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> as much of the retro stuff as uh, has uh, become expensive um, it's a shame because this is one of those machines that I, I really think anyone should try to get hold of because there are some really 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 fun games and the machine itself works really well I've got bro one broken one but it looks like it's been sorely misused and, and left in a really horrible environment which I'm, I'm going to fix at some point uh, but this this is rock solid, this machine, and um, it's a very simple construction inside, so I think it probably will last for quite a while. And like I said, the, the RGB cables are available still to buy, brand new, uh, and it's got it's a really nice, quite crisp signal coming out of it. And I, obviously this is through the OSSC, but I think that even without an OSSC it will still be a good picture, which I might try one day.
Actually, I would have tried it. Because I used to, before I got an OSSC, I just had another really, really cheap um, uh, SCART to HDMI converter that I was using for quite a lot of my uh, stuff. It's just it couldn't handle weird signals. And I actually did use this through that, and it did work. And the picture was fine. A little bit of noise, maybe, but fine. So, um, yeah, it's... It's an obtainable piece of, of hardware in the sense that it works easily and it, it's it's quite easy to set up and get playing with. Uh, plus, the you know, the, the worst you probably have to do if you buy one is you'll probably have to clean the controller so they work on the inside. But they're, they're really simple construction. They're very, they're just um, the basic switch based um rocker mechanism so it's not hard to fix or do anything so in terms of uh, in terms of it has got a bit of a hint of micro machines yeah in terms of uh ease of use uh, for retro machines this is definitely up there it's just a shame that the prices are going insane it really is uh, and it's not like this was a rare machine because like i said in its day this was being touted as, as basically like the the number one games machine for people to buy uh, so they weren't in short supply and it got released in France and I think uh, in Spain to a small degree as well. So uh, yeah, it's not in short supply. So the, the, the prices are it's just those artificially uh, inflated uh, retro prices, unfortunately. Right, well, let's move on. I think we are going to be going to another machine after this uh, well after i've done all these games because i think this is only it's only going to take us halfway through the session uh fortunately there's lots to choose from so we're okay right we are going to play a soccer game because of course we are It is. This is soccer. <laughs> they thought long and hard about it. I'm really annoyed that the sound isn't working because uh, there is actually a whistle and it does sound like a whistle. But look, the ball actually does look like a ball. I realise that's a silly thing to say. But, um, hold on, am I reds? Oh, I'm reds. Okay, that explains that. Yeah, it's a really, really... Um, yeah, it's not a great game. <laughs> it's not a great game at all. <laughs> it's it's all it all just jumps around and uh, yeah. <laughs> I think these are basically the the titles that were knocked out quite early on, and uh, they're not great. So, if you don't know Epoch's history, Epoch are, um, they're actually a massively successful company. So, they have got their fingers in lots of pies. Like, uh, I, I, you've probably, if you're of a certain age or you've had children or whatever, you probably know Sylvanian families, the little animal model things. Well, they're involved in all that stuff. Barco Battler was one of their things that Tommy picked up. Uh, they do... They do loads and loads of um, handheld LCD games. They were really big on the handheld LCD game front. Um, I what? Uh oh. Top right hand corner. Okay. My Apple Mac just gave up. <laughs> the um the animation isn't great all right i just have to do a quick uh thing so you, you you'll get to see there's something i don't actually get to to, to use quite a lot is the uh the technical issues
All right, sorry about that, folks. <laughs> I'm back. Just a minor issue with the uh, the Apple Mac, so uh, Erica has gone. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> right. Anyway, <laughs> soccer. Let's get back to that wonderful animation. It does look like the animation is about two frames per second. I don't even know if my buttons are doing anything. That's how bad the animation is. Right. <laughs> I think we're going to move on to another game because, yeah, this is awful. Uh, in fact, I'll show you. So when I first got this, because this is one of the games I, um, I kind of got early on. And... Uh, and it's one of the first games I tried as well. So I didn't realise what the game was. Because this is the screen I saw. So this is the we can't detect a cartridge screen. But I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't know that. So I just assumed that, uh, that soccer was a very, very weird name for a game that had balloons in it. <laughs> I was quite upset, actually. I thought I was about to play a clone of Balloon Fighter. That would have been kind of good. Anyway. We fortunately found out differently, and we discovered elevi Elevator Fight, so that all worked out well. Right. So, this is literally called Battle in Galaxy. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it's, it's basically Galaxians, yeah. As you can see from the very colourful sprites. No, it's not Star Wars. It's Astro Wars. <laughs> Oops. It's also very, very quick. Uh, it's a very good game. But uh, it's quicker than I am. Uh, doesn't say much nowadays. But yeah. Uh, the bullets are very big. And, and they take a surprising amount of time to come down the screen. But... The ships are always diving at you, so you end up walking into them anyway. So yeah, it's a really, really nice uh, Galaxian's Galaga clone. Yeah. <laughs> ah, die, damn you. There we go. <laughs> it's yeah <laughs> it's it's psychedelic uh, and it's uh, ooh, when you have to concentrate on shooting the thing it really does kind of throw you ah well there we go I need one more shot to kill it and I got killed unbelievable right Level one complete. <laughs> Who says I'm terrible at games? Yeah, so, I mean, there's, that's it. I mean, that's the game. <laughs> it's just that they dive more and they fire more now. But it's, uh, it's a really, really nice version of Galaga Galaxians. Just really nice. <laughs> Uh, it's very, very colourful. It moves very quick. Uh, again, the shame the sound isn't working because uh, it's um, tuneful, let's say. There's, there's certainly noises. Uh, we're not talking uh, orchestral here, but, you know, it's alright for the age. Oh, so, it's so hard to hit the last one. Ah, there we go. Right, uh, now this. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> so that was Battle in Galaxy. It's a nice game. It's uh, it's, it's simple. It's just a, it's a Galaxian's clone. Um, it doesn't have all of the extra kind of um, pattern stuff that Galaxian's has. But it's, um, it's a nice enough game. Drink of juice. Right. 
So this is Punch Boy. I kind of own this. I have, I've accidentally bought this game about four times so far. So um, uh, the main reason being because uh, the color, there's two variants of the color. But also the box has this on it, which bears no resemblance to the actual game. So, uh, <laughs> so I've, I've managed to buy it multiple times from auctions. Right, here we go. So this is uh, this is Punch Boy. So these things here are dinosaur eggs, dragon eggs. These things here let you punch stuff. And so the idea is we basically need to punch dragons. So if I do this one, bang, there goes a dragon. Oh, you can also be hit by the eggs moving over you. So, uh, yeah. And they can fire through walls. <laughs> this is a tough game. <laughs> Plus your little punchy things uh, also time out. So <laughs> he literally came out the egg and immediately burned me to a crisp. Yeah, your, uh, your, the punchy things in the corners time out. So once you've used them once, that's basically it. Right, I need to try to to draw one of them down here for this other punchy one here. That's not good. That's now blocked the punchy thing. Oh, I just managed to kill myself by walking into the ball as I hit it. Right. So yeah, so the idea is you just got to get rid of the dragons and eventually a key will appear in the middle uh, and then you can open up something and get through. I don't, I'm assuming I've never got that far, so I don't know. <laughs> I played this on stream once and um, yeah, wasn't good. <laughs> Thank you, Snorkers. Boom, I got one. I think the idea is you're supposed to get multiples, but um, I can barely hit one, so uh, yeah. Right. Now we need to... Come on. Come up here, damn you. Come up here. I'm here. Damn it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> this game is tricky. It's. I'm sure there's a trick. there is a trick to doing it. And I'm just completely missing it. And it's probably there's something really simple you have to do to actually do it. Because this is the first level. <laughs> but uh, by the same token, if there is, I don't know what it is. <laughs> right, come on. One of those has got to come out here, surely. Yes. Have a fist in your face. There we go. Oh, that's accidentally... Right, so now... Right, okay. All but one of my things are now deactivated. Because they've gone green, so I can't use them anymore. Which means this is the only activated one. Boom! Got two of them. Look at that. Right. Now the key is available. Right. So I need to rush over here. Get the key. Now all my things are open again. So they're all available. Right. Now I'm kind of remembering what I learned last time. Well, you know, sort of. Ah, come yeah, this is yeah. So this is Punch Boy. Um, it's a it's an interesting game. Obviously, it's it's just really hard. <laughs> or I'm really just terrible at it. That's obviously the other thing. Maybe people who are competent at games can actually play this with relative ease. Right, I need you to come this way, not down. Nope, you went down. God damn you. <laughs> uh, right. Can we get there in time? That's the question. 
No, damn you. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you can't just punch the dragons. Have I ever tried that? Yep, no, you can't just punch the dragons. Well, it's worth a try. I'm not sure if I ever tried it. Right, I'm not going to get there in time. Yeah, so... <laughs> I think this is very probably the best I've ever done at this game. And that says a lot. Boom! Thank you, DJ20. I'm assuming that's a YouTube channel. There are now over 300 videos on there. So you are bound to find something you find at least vaguely interesting. Well, bound might be a strong word. There's definitely a chance, though. Okay, so I think they're all disabled now. Right? So why have they not re-enabled it? And what's this? Is this just two of the things together? Yes, it is. Okay, well, I'm pretty sure these are all disabled now. He just crushed me. He crushed me for a rock. <laughs> right. So I think they're all disabled. So I don't know how I now go about... Oh, okay. Maybe not. I, I kind of wasted that. Anyway, that was Punch Boy. Which is... Uh, it's a really interesting game. It's uh, It's not bad. It's just hard. Um, it's definitely different as well. There's, it's definitely different. Right. Oh no, it's a different game. I thought I said I was about to put the same game in. Right, so this is a game called Nebula. As you can see, right there. And uh, this is another spacey shooty game. There we go. It's got rather nice use of uh, kind of fake para uh, ver oh, there, vertical parallax there with pyramids in the background. So it's basically um, it's kind of defender uh, mixed with um, scramble. And it's quite nice. It's the the parallax at the back is a bit weird, <laughs> but it's uh, it's a nice yeah it's a nice enough game. I'm also firing off loads of rockets, which I don't think I need to do. I'm pushing the wrong button. I keep forgetting this thing is two buttons, and just using uh, the the left button for everything. But it's kind of useful to have the rockets because you can just drop them down like this. Oh, not like that, but like that. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> That's a nice enough game. Hello, Kropotkin. It's nice and colourful. So I'm not a big fan of the parallax in the background, but it works. Nice little fireworks in the sky when stuff uh, blows up as well. Yeah, it's it's another. The Super Cassette version was good at graphics. It really was. So considering it's a uh, yeah third generation, yeah. And some of the games are quite interesting as well. I'd say Punch Boy is an interesting game. Uh, this is pretty good. 
Although, again, yeah, it's just not the greatest game in the world, but it's alright. It moves well enough. The graphics are nice and quite detailed. I like the way it, um, the, the kind of the spaceship is animated quite well. Unfortunately, after you've blown stuff up and you walk into it, you still die. Some reason, Google just to suddenly started decided to show me tons of uh, notifications from earlier in the day. Right, so there we go. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the thing that's killing me most. Ah, uh, Captain, this is the uh, Epoch Super Cassette Vision. Which was a third generation console. Um, came out before the uh, the Famicom, unfortunately. Despite being uh, comparative to the to the Famicom, possibly not quite as powerful, uh, it did not survive, and uh, Nintendo managed to quash it quite easily. But it has a nice collection of games. Uh, it's oh, again every time into the buildings. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice machine. Oh, it's one of my favourites as well. It's um, it's one of those machines that you look at and you think it uh, it kind of deserved a bit of a better shout, really. I'd say it's probably uh, a little bit more advanced than the ColecoVision, but yeah, not far off. If you look at some of, some of the games, the, the animation it's got uh, and the level of detail which just puts it slightly above, but yeah, it's um, it wasn't quite as good as the, as the Famicom, but it, well, it wasn't that far off. But yeah, so this is, yeah, this is Nebula. It's um, it's not much more than this, I don't think. This is the newest game I own, so I, I didn't get this game that long ago. Uh, I, I, one of the rare times when I found a, a cheap Super uh, Cassette Vision game on uh, on eBay, rather than just through Japanese auctions. Ah, uh, <laughs> and it's kind of nice the way that the ship kind of uh, it, it collide it. it it uh, falls from the sky rather than just um, just blows up. So it's kind of nice. It's, it's got some nice animation and some nice graphics. I thought I recognised the name. Thanks for coming to the stream. It's a good... Uh, I was I was tempted to do the Amstrad myself, but then you uh, said you were doing it. So it gave me a, a reason to do a console instead. The last time I streamed the 800XL. No, BBC Micro. The last, the last trade one I did the BBC Micro. I did the 800XL in, a, in, a, in my own personal one a little while ago. Right, so as you can see, this is Comic Circus. This is an odd game. <laughs> it's like some of those, those really simple um, LCD games. Uh, like a couple of the Nintendo ones for a start. But uh, yeah, I, I'm not fully sure about the, some of the rules. But yeah, it's uh, yeah, <laughs> it's colourful. It's, it's it's a nice game. Again, there's a lot of colour being thrown around on these games. So uh, yeah, as always, you just uh, all you're trying to do is catch the person on the other end. But I can't work out if we're trying to get just the balloons or if we're trying to hit the birds. I think the birds are that you don't want to hit the birds. But occasionally you can't avoid the birds. So it's a little bit... Oops. Oops. That didn't look good. That, that, that did not look good at all. And up we go. I haven't really managed to get high enough to hit the balloons yet. 
Oh, the, the birds also ship money as well. Sorry, poo money. Keeping it PG. It's uh, this does remind me. Uh, some of the stuff this does reminds me a lot of um, uh, the the thingy Charlie the Clown game, which I've got on the uh, the sixty four game system. Thanks, Rocket. There we go. Right, so I think that's because we ran out of birds. So, it's an odd game. But we move to the next level anyway. We get this little Pac-Man-esque <laughs> interst interstitial screen thing. So now it's the exact same game, but this time we've got a trampoline and not a, uh, a seesaw. But yeah, it's basically at this point breakout. <laughs> And the idea again is to try as many balloons, I think, as possible uh, without getting all the birds. So you've got a certain number of birds at the top. But just occasionally it's impossible to avoid the birds. Oh, there you go. Bird has pooped some more money. There we are. <laughs> The collision, the uh, collision detection can also be a little bit ropey on this. Sometimes it doesn't register you hitting a balloon. It is all I'm saying. This is not happening in a UK circus, that's for sure. Oh, and just occasionally he'll he'll go up the top and he'll, he'll walk across the top for some reason. Right, get the balloon. Get the balloon. Drop down, get the balloon. Yeah! And it's still going. So, you know, right, so now we're doing this. I don't know what's going on now. And we're getting money. Don't know. What are the rules? Was that because we got all the balloons? Was that because we managed to hit him in the middle bit? Don't know. I'm, I'm guessing. I don't know. I'm guessing we got the middle bit because we got all the balloons and we got the money because we hit the middle bit, but I can't know for sure. And we can't avoid hit missing the bird this time, so that's that. But yeah, <laughs> it's an odd, odd game, that's for sure. But again, lots and lots of colour. The clowns are recognisably clowns, which is, um, which is a big thing, I think. Oh, and again, we've changed. So the scenery's changed. It's the same game, really. But just we don't know who's going to fall off. Or where he's going to fall off. Right, so... Right, so yeah, we didn't want to do that. There we go. Now we're doing it. Right. Bounce. <laughs> Bounce. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's the same game. It's just done in a, a slightly weirder way. <laughs> there appears to be some kind of weird physics in this where he'll bounce off of the uh, off the balloon sometimes. Don't hit the bird. Don't hit the person. No! Right, get the balloons. Get the balloons. Yeah, we've got the balloons. <laughs> right, this time we've got we've, we've got no middle thing to grab onto and just get random bags of money. There's no... Yeah, the physics aren't really there. You can't really adjust the angle that much. You can kind of deepen the angle if you just get him in the middle but it doesn't it's not really proper physics not to be uh, not not that surprising I guess but this is annoying where you're just trying to do the balloons and they keep grabbing him and he's going to hit the last bird no he didn't now he is can't get that last balloon in the corner all these right got one 
fire. Oh. <laughs> oh, we crushed both of them. Right. So that was Comic Circus. Okay, so we've got one more game to try. Half an hour to do it in. So, uh, Pop and Chips, which is the game we was on when we first started. <clears throat> now, this is a weird game again. I'm not entirely sure I know how to play it. I've kind of worked out some of the mechanics over time, but I have forgotten quite a lot of that because it's been a while since I played it. Okay, so we're this weird green creature who looks like... I don't know. I don't know what he looks like. Like one of the bad guys from uh, Bubble Bubble is what he looks like. But yeah, so we need to... Uh, so we can collect things and make things fall down. Oh, there's, there's this guy, which we can move. We can also move uh, these ladders across. This guy stomps away around and kills things, including us. So we just wait for him to pass. Those little things there seem to make new blocks. And I think we have to catch the little things. So, yeah, there we go. We got score. Again, not entirely sure that I've got the mechanics of this down. <laughs> Yeah, we can move the ladder. So if we go here, go on, move the ladder. There we go. So now we can break this. There we go. Whose hat? Has he got a hat? I thought that was his head. We could get this salt shaker, and this salt shaker will basically make it so that these things all go a different colour, Pac Man like. And uh, we can then kill them. So those obviously also create platforms. Uh, there we go, so we've got that. But we can also go, so he'll chase after us, but we can go here, like this. Nope, oh, didn't get time. Uh-oh, now we're done for. That's fine, we just kind of wait for them both to, to catch up with us like this, go slowly. There we go. Oh, the stumpy thing. Yeah, he does have a nice crown. Right, now we've got the salt. So now we can kill these things. There we go. That's very much like Bubble Bubble as well. Maybe this is like a prequel to Bubble Bubble. I died. I don't know why I died. And it starts again. And the bomb will just let you kind of blow everything up. Like that. Oh, here's Mr. Stompy. Hello, Mr. Stompy. Let's fall down. Remove that so he can't get to us. Yeah. <laughs> so this is Pop and Chips, and it is... It is an odd game, to say the least. <laughs> I'm sure it's based on something else, because quite a lot of the Super Cassette Vision games seem to be based on something else. I don't know if I like me know what it is, but Okay, we've got the salt. So you can kill these guys. They do come back though. You don't get to kill them forever. And that guy didn't die for some reason and then killed us. He is a fancy man. He's a fancy, stompy man. There's no doubt about that. Right, so if we move this ladder over there, that means we can get this. There we 
we go. Fortunately, we can fall down without dying. Here comes Mr. Stompy again. Go over here, and we go here. That means we can do this. Uh oh, run, 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 run. We're in trouble. <laughs> Mr. Stompy's after us. It's okay, we got past Mr. Stompy. We got past Mr. Stompy in enough time to be here for this thing to whatever this is tiny squid baby. This feels this feels basically like the was that it? I think I did it. Yes, C2. This kind of feels like the, the story of this game is that somebody has converted my babies to fruit. Which just seems a bit... Let's do that. That seems good. This seems like there's something to do. So yeah, anyway. This is the game. <laughs> So here's all of our squid babies. I'm not going to get across to that one. Never mind. And the idea is that we get all our squid babies. But if we don't get them in time. They'll turn back into fruits. Which which is certainly a storyline. And you just kind of wait for the fruit. The, the, the squid babies to come down. So you can catch them. Splat! <laughs> I forgot you could do that. Splat you as well. There we go. Oh, okay, land on me. That wasn't so good. Anyway. <laughs> we died. So we could put our name in. And it would save our name if we had batteries in. We don't have batteries in. It's got like a little battery compartment there. And we can... Oh. We can put some batteries in there and it will save our high scores and stuff uh, so this um, if you've seen uh, some of my videos uh, we made a battery cover for uh, Dragon Slayer a game which is still not working uh, it's got the same basically the same battery cover as this so we use this to create a mold to create a battery cover for that turned out quite well um, kind of show you that so there you go. Turned out fairly well. Got the colour matched up quite well. It's not perfect, but it's not bad. I do still have to fix the game though, so, uh, you know. It's not an entire win yet. Right, so I think what we'll do, because there's only what, 26 minutes left. Uh, well, let's try, first of all, see if we can actually get golf to work. As dull as that is, we couldn't quite get it to start, so let's give that a try. Oh, there we go. It started this time. So, I mean, it's golf. <laughs> We're not going to be seeing anything weird. Oh, I think I, I think I accidentally started off the golf hitting. That doesn't look like I should have landed there. I don't know. I don't know how. Uh, yeah, I don't know how this works. <laughs> it's a golf game. If you played uh, Famicom Golf. Uh, then you probably know what's going on. Oh, that was better. I say better. It didn't really go very far. But yeah, it's it's golf. <laughs> We're really not doing well on it. But anyway, it's good that we got that to work. Uh, we've got everything else working, didn't we? 
Uh, we're not going to go back to Milky Princess. That was um, that was weird. Uh, right. We'll try a little bit more of uh, of Lupin because that was a fun game. Twenty four minutes is a bit not really enough time to get something else keyed up. <laughs> well, Milky Princess is wrong, so it's fine. <laughs> I think we worked out that it was just because she's uh, the mother of the Milky Bar kid. So it's fine. There's nothing weird. <laughs> this game is great. Uh, the animation is just brilliant. It's such a, like a kind of a classic arcade animation. Oh, okay. That was quite tricky. Here comes the policeman to arrest us. Why he's walking like a crab, I don't know. Let's, let's not risk it by killing things we don't need to kill. Right, jump, jump. Damn. The possibly turds uh, got me. It's just, it's a really characterful game as well. It's brilliant. I may look up the uh, the anime just because this seems like it's it's kind of fun. no point killing things that we don't need to kill because because then we make mistakes like that it's not going well we did so well earlier we managed to get to the next level and everything right uh, we are doing a weekend stream of fun for the uh, Centre for Computing History in Cambridge. Uh, if you look, the donation link pops up every now and again to uh, say where uh, where to go to donate. Um, don't worry if you can't donate, um, just sharing is helpful. And just being here and watching is nice, obviously. It's a bit of a weird concept. I don't know how much of the anime uh, exists in a in a in a sewer, but um, this game certainly seems to spend a lot of its time in a sewer. We are currently 46% of the way to our goal for this weekend. Uh, we do have some big hitters coming up. Uh, obviously, we had one in the morning in uh, in Kim Justice. After me, um, we have uh, Octavius Kitten. After Octavius, it's Nostalgia Nerd. So uh, do stick around for those. If you're not sticking around for me to running through a, uh, a sewer dodging turds obviously it's very strange if you're not <laughs> ah no I jumped way too early <laughs> I was doing so well comparatively compared to how I've been doing recently. <clears throat> oh, okay, missed that back. That's fine. It's all nice little things like the uh, the police cars running across the top and everything 
Nice little bits of animation going on. Strange crab walking policeman. Right. I'm wondering what I can. Uh, I missed the missed the crocodile. That's a shame. So yeah, so I don't know what the objective is. Presumably we're escaping from the police through the sewers. Presumably. Okay, so how about because we've done this. How about we quickly play on the N64 for 18 minutes? How about that? The N64 being a machine that is literally sitting right next to me. And so is the uh, the easiest thing for me to suddenly get up and running. Actually, it's not the easiest thing. There's lots of stuff I can get up and running. You know what? There's a ton of stuff I can get up and running. Let's do some PC Engine instead, because that's even... No! Famicom Disk System! Let's do some Famicom Disk System instead. My word. We were literally just talking about it earlier. Of course, we're going to do Famicom this system. Right. So, in terms of uh, of, of weird stuff, the Famicom this system is easily as weird as. Uh, As anything else, so we may as well just do that. 18 minutes, and we'll be seeing some interesting uh, games at that time, no doubt. Right. Plus, I believe we have sound, which is good. There are player one. Right, so this is the Famicom Disk System. I am using a Famicom Disk Stick, which is uh, an SD solution for it. Right, so this is Night Law. This is what I was talking about earlier with games that have, um, where they borrowed the license uh, or, or rented the license from a UK company and made a completely different game. Night Law is uh, a similar game, but very different. But we're not going to do that. We're just going to randomly choose a game that is probably not porn. There is some porn. We're going to randomly choose a game that isn't porn. That sounds like it's going to be a graphic novel, but let's give it a try anyway. So, Magma Project. more like it right now occasionally you'll see me duck down because uh, it's pretending to be a Famicom disk system which was double-sided and so every now and again I have to change the disk B and it's a virtually changed disk B it means I have to push a button twice but yeah this is looking like a graphic novel which means we're going to be very much in the weeds Uh, my Famicom disk system doesn't look like that because I've got a sharp twin Famicom. Okay, I think this is telling me to do side B, presumably. Or not. Maybe it's just telling me a story, right? R923, so that's going to be an Android, I believe. Right, there's side B. Right, so now I go down here and I, I just flip a switch twice. That tells me it's loading, I believe. And again. Oh, here we go. Right. Oh, look at this. This is nice and right, no walking animation, but hey. Don't know what I just did. Can we talk to this guy? No, no, we can't. Right, let's try this building over here. Oh. 
Okay, I guess not. <laughs> oh, is that a very small Eiffel Tower? Are we in, are we in like mini France or something? <laughs> well, I don't know where we're going to go then. <laughs> it's kind of like a very dull version of Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> oh, oh, we got something else. Oh. Not really, though. I think we'll try a different game. <laughs> okay, well, I mean Metroid. We may as well try Metroid out. I say try out, we all know Metroid. Well, presumably we all know Metroid. Oliver Twins, that's right. Thank you. I do get them confused. See you, Computer Museum. How do I end? <laughs> Oh, there we go. There we are. All punctuation marks, but that's fine. Exclamation marks. <laughs> I will ponder. Right, side B on the disc again. Okay, that is the one thing. Although this is a uh, an SD solution, it, it is still pretending very much to be the Famicom disk system, and therefore we have load times. Right, Metroid. The first, uh, first Metroid game. Yeah, no, it, it, it totally. They're uh, they're trying to make sure it's as compatible as possible. The first Metroid game, which was so scandalous because you found out that the protagonist was a woman, which just kind of <laughs> says everything, really. Nice little, um, it's a nice little adventure game. Again, and I've said this quite a few times today, not something I'm a huge big fan of. Not, I don't dislike it, but I just, uh, yeah. It wasn't something that we saw much uh, in the UK. The, the NES wasn't hugely popular here. How do I turn to my ball? Turn into the ball. I don't remember how to turn into the ball. 
Never mind. Ah, uh, right. That's it. Yeah. Uh, no, this is the NES, sorry. <laughs> I changed machines. We're now playing on the Famicom disk system. And everything just respawns as well, which I've never really liked in games. It was as well, yes, it was. It's, um... Uh, that's because Nintendo were iffy about doing certain size cartridges, so... It came out on the disc system first. Sorry, Hog. Yeah, it's, um, <laughs> there are only a few minutes left, so there wasn't much point uh, go going through other games. So we just quickly changed system. Ah, no, oh, jump. <laughs> it would have been quite, ah, oh, no, 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 no. We died as soon as we went through. <laughs> oh, we'll quickly. We've got six minutes. We're fine. We can. We can quickly uh, try a different one. Let me just open up my my Twitch. Page, just so I know. Right. Uh, what's Michael English Diboken? We we'll have to try that out, obviously. <laughs> the problem with the Famicom disk system is uh, there are. Hey, sorceress. There are um, several, let's say, adult games that pop up, and uh, we went through some of those when I streamed before. Amazing. <laughs> In the year 2000X, Michael the Cat happened to be expelled from... Right, yeah. It's too much words. Set B of discard. I've set B. Let's try again. If you've only just joined us, this is part of the weekly stream reform for the Centre for Computing History in Cambridge. Uh, it's a very, very worthy cause. If you uh, can donate, do. If not, then please uh, share. It's uh, it's very, very worthwhile. This is the uh, Famicom Disk System. So, uh, yep, just the Japanese version of the NES. What on earth? <laughs> Okay, so it's an edutainment title with apparently Garfield. <laughs> I, oh God. <laughs> I mean, we're not going to do well, guys, because it's, it, it's uh, a... <laughs> 
it's an edutainment program and it's in Japanese, so uh <laughs> I can jump all the way up here. What on earth? <laughs> oh my word, this is astonishing. <laughs> Yeah, the trouble is we can't speak. The, we can't read the Japanese that is trying to make us spell. Does it just want us to do A A B? Is that it? That's it. That's what it wants us to do. What's that teaching? <laughs> You can't, you're being attacked by things, you can't help but and jump into the wrong process. letters! <laughs> Testing stereo profile. Complete. Oh my Testing word! <laughs> Complete. Loading secret sky PCM beta. Complete. Running file secret sky set. I would argue Check that... Complete. This is more about... DVR. Dodging letters than it is about getting the right letters. <laughs> Right, there we go. <laughs> it spawned the top of me! You see, how, how do I go through... How do I go and get the sea now? Insane. <laughs> I do not believe this is teaching anyone anything. Right, that was just odd. Okay, right. I think, hopefully, I am now going across to uh, Octavius. I st I don't know anything, Rockdale. I mean, why? I mean, no none of it. None of it makes sense. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> why are you Garfield? And that is blatantly Garfield, right? That is absolutely Garfield. And how is this teaching English? When half the time it's because you're accidentally hitting the wrong letter. Because it's flowing into you. I would argue that this would put more people off learning English than it would actually teach them English. Right. So I am now going to uh, start a raid. And we are going off to uh, the rather wonderful Octavius. Uh, to continue this weekend streamer form. Thank you all very much for joining me. It's uh, it's been wonderful. Thanks for watching me uh, and listening to me witter on about the Super Concert Vision and now the Famicom Disk System with its most wonderful games. I will see you on the other side. Goodbye. <laughs>